When I come to this country, the first things I want Americans is to see what is happening in Sudan. In the name of jihad, two million my people's Christian in southern Sudan was a slaughter. In the name of jihad, thousands of southern Sudanese kids, boys and girls was taken into the slavery and convert to Islam. In the name of jihad, and in the name of Sharia, Sudan become the first country in the continent of Africa to become an Islamic state. Where I don't have a right, that is why I left it and I came where the freedom is being preserved. And that freedom, if you will not uphold it and defend it, of course, some of us are so naive and always we don't need to talk about it. Yes, you don't need to talk about it because you're scared. You don't need to talk about it because you don't want to be told that you are anti this and you are anti that. You are not anti anything. You don't want somebody to come and impose his ideology on you. The war on terror is not a war on terror, it's a war on ideology. The first thing we want as Americans when we came here as, as refugees, please see what is happening in the country of Sudan, because it's coming to you here. And we were told, you just want to drag us in your war. I'm not dragging you on anything. What I'm telling you, because if they finish with me, they're going to come here to you. And yes, it has happened. Do you want to know? Where are the Twin Towers? Where are our fellow citizens, brothers and sisters, cousin, nephew, husbands and wives, those who perished in 9-11s? There was a slaughter in the names of jihad. Because the first thing those individuals said before they slaughter innocent people, they used the word, Allah, what but God is great. Because they achieve what they are there to do. The blind Sheikh, Sheikh Umar Abdurrahman, came to United States through Sudan. And we want you, but we didn't, you didn't listen. He was the first to attempt to bring down the, the towers, and he didn't succeed. It. And we told you again, if you think that by putting these blind sheikh behind bar, then you solve the problems, then you have a problems. And they sat down, and they worked behind the scene because you don't want to talk about it, and they came back and they achieve their goals. If everybody listen, or if anyone listen then, we wouldn't be in the war today. If anyone listen in Washington, our brothers, sons and daughters would not be even dying now. What you don't get? You're seeing it every day. You're seeing it everywhere. You're seeing it in the street, in Madrid, in Paris, in London, calling for Sharia law to be implemented in those countries. And you're seeing it in some of your area here. I don't want to mention because you know. And why should I be afraid not to mention? You've seen it these last weeks. When somebody that we honor as our soldiers, when and slaughter his brother in comrade, 
in the name of jihad. My fellow citizens and my fellow Americans, I'm speaking from the heart, um, the bottom of my heart, because I don't want what happened in Sudan to happen in this nation because I love this nation the most. And I cannot walk away in this war because freedom means a lot to me. Freedom is our way of life. And if you don't believe in it and love it, I will buy you one-way ticket to Iran and go and see it for yourself. I give you one way ticket to go to Sudan and see for yourself when you're being called as infidels. Our constitution is a God given right, was put together by our founding father of this, of this lovely nation of ours. Please say no to jihad, say no to Sharia law. And let's join hands together, believe it or not, don't shy away and be scared that you are, you don't want to be called anti this and anti this. Our way of life is what everybody in the world today wants to copy. Don't walk away from this war and thank you very much. A witness a reliable witness. Another reliable witness to speak about living under Sharia and the imposition of Sharia is Nani Darwish, author, writer, human rights activist, an incredibly brave woman who lives under death threat. Um, and she speaks the truth about Islam. She'll enlighten us about apostasy. Uh, she's also the exec executive director of Former Muslims United. It's an excellent website, formermuslimsunited.org. It's an organization of apostates that can enlighten you and, uh, bring, and, and maybe give an indication, perhaps to the media, to the media that's here, you, formermuslimsunited.org, to see the real threat of apostasy to, to Rifka Barry. Nani, you want to come up here and, uh, and enlighten the folks? I am honored to be here today with the patriots of today. You are the patriots of today. America is facing a dangerous threat, a threat to the core of America. This threat has never been as intense. This is a threat from inside the United States. It is not an outside threat like the Soviet Union or World War II. This is an internal threat under the guise of religion. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Islam is not just a religion. We are all scared of criticizing Islam because people will call, will call us names, but the the religious side of Islam is, is not important for me to criticize. It's only about 5 or 10 percent of the religion. The majority of the religion of Islam is a political system. And it's a very uh, elaborate legal system that can put you to death if you leave it. There's only one philosophy in the world that agrees with Islam, and it's the mafia. You leave the mafia, you are killed. You leave Islam, you are killed.